Hey brother, welcome to day two of our journey to wisdom, 40 days of wisdom. When I was in about third or fourth grade, our teacher gave us an assignment to come back the next day with a motto or a proverb. So I went home not knowing what in the world I was going to come back with. And so I asked my mom, I said, Mom, I, I need to go to school tomorrow with a proverb or a motto. And she said, well, you know, there is a book in the Bible called Proverbs. And I had never connected those two words. And so I looked through the book of Proverbs and I came across this proverb. And I've never forgotten it. It said, a soft answer turns away wrath. And so I went to school the next day and gave that proverb. But you know, that proverb has lived in my mind so many thousands of times through my growing up and my adult life. A soft answer turns away wrath. How frequently that comes into play. Well, I found that proverb to be true in my life. And you're going to find many of these proverbs to be very, very practical. But we have to be careful as we read the book of Proverbs that it doesn't just become a little checkbook of snappy sayings or that it isn't reduced to technique or just prudence or common sense. It is common sense, but it's God's sense. So I want to take you back to the motto of Proverbs, which is in Proverbs 1-7, and it uses the word Lord, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This first chapter of Proverbs is really a father talking to his son. It's like parents pleading with their child, their son or their daughter, please gain wisdom. Don't ignore wisdom. And actually, for the first nine chapters, it's laying down a foundation, kind of an encyclopedic walkabout of what wisdom looks like. But you're also going to come across in Proverbs all kinds of individual little sayings. What we have to be careful of is that, yes, these are true on the ground, and yes, they can affect our daily life, but they're also grounded in godliness. Because the wise are primarily godly, and the godly evidence that by being wise. So wisdom includes being teachable. And when you have a Lord in your life, when the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, when he is Lord of your life, then you have an authority in your life to whom you want to be accountable and teachable. And so you will listen to his coaching. You will listen to his discernment and discretion. You will take instruction and even correction from him because you recognize he knows more than you do and he cares for you, but he also wants your life to count for him and be fruitful. So today, as we think about the Lord in our life, I want to ask you, do you have a healthy, reverent fear and accountability a knowledge that the Lord is watching over you and wanting to guide you. And this will guide you into all wisdom. I'd like to encourage you to read chapter one of Proverbs as your devotions today and to look and to see the heart of God coming through the practical wisdom of a father asking his son to open his heart and his mind and to have a healthy reverence for the instruction that he's going to receive. As you do, you'll find your heart opened to what God wants you to learn today. God bless you.